Hey there, and welcome to Morning Coffee. I am your host, Brooke Carlock, and on this show, we get down and dirty with real talk about grief. Thank you so much for joining us, and let's get to the show. Okay, welcome to Morning Coffee. <laughs> and almost Happy New Year. It's the New Year's edition of Morning Coffee. Um, so, as you roll in, as people roll in, if you have anything you want to ask us about, anything you want to say, hi, Diane. Um, yeah, feel free to throw that in the chat if you have any questions or topics or whatever, or just tell us where you are uh, watching from, or just say hi so we can say hi back. All right. Let's get started. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so David's back with me, if you didn't notice. Uh, he decided to pop over today so that we could talk about our Christmas and how that went and what's coming up for New Year and all that jazz. So I guess we can start. We forgot last week until the end, so we'll start off. This is not my typical coffee because... I came up with a new and cheaper method of making my protein coffee. So it, it's a little bit different, um, but a little bit less expensive. And I'm using instant coffee in it, which is kind of like, oh. but I got rid of my coffee maker because I was annoyed with not having enough space on my countertop. So tiny yeah, house tiny house living. So now I'm making it with instant coffee <laughs> and some hot chocolate mix and other stuff like that. I'll have to do another video with how I make it. All right, what are you drinking? Hot chocolate. Double Five chocolate, hot chocolate. Brazilian marshmallows in it. It's, it's <laughs> marshmallows with hot chocolate. It is a lot of marshmallows. They can't see from there, but it's a lot of marshmallows in there. Um, okay, so <clears throat> first thing I wanted to tell you that's kind of exciting is that uh, morning coffee is now a podcast as well as a live stream. So if you miss our uh, live stream, you could actually catch it on any of the podcast channels. So yeah, we're on <clears throat> Spotify, iHeartRadio, um, Audible, Amazon Music, Pandora. Pandora. Yeah, there's a bunch. So pretty much wherever you watch or listen to podcasts if you're driving in the car or whatever, then you can catch morning coffee on there. So, um, yes, I know. I do have an ask though. If you are going to, if you do listen on any of those channels, if you could leave a rating um, or write a comment that really helps other people to find it. So that would be awesome. If you could do that. Okay. Oh, you can tell that story if you want. No, I was just visiting my aunt yesterday, and she asked me where she could find Brooke's podcast. And I said, no, she doesn't really do that anymore. And she, it's mostly on YouTube now, and then goes from there. And then five minutes after I left my aunt's house, Brooke said, hey, can you check this and see if it's working on Pandora? Can you find it? And I'm like, I thought you didn't do podcasts. And she said, well, it's what I need to do going into 2024 yeah. so yeah so now there's podcasts and so i gotta call Aunt linda and apologize for lying too. well you didn't know so you weren't lying that's true that's yeah true. we also if you know we i've got merch so i've got my morning coffee teas um not that anyone else would want a morning coffee tea <laughs> maybe, maybe you do maybe you really really love my show if you want a morning coffee tea uh, if you do, you can find them on uh, my website under products. But I do have some other shirts that I really like that say like grief socks. And there's there's a bunch on there. So if you're in, interested in any grief merch. Uh, I like the grief waves. Surf club. Yes. Oh, that is a good one. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a I should bring it out here. But do you want to take over <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um yeah it's like a circle that says grief waves surf club because of the grief tsunamis that i talk about so i like that one too anyway i came up with some designs that i like so if you're interested head to the website for carlock.org 
and then look under products and they're there, along with a ton of free resources for anyone who is grieving um, stuff that you don't have to pay for. I've got all kinds of stuff on there um, to help you for free. And I actually just created a new resource that I'm super excited about. I've been working on it for a while, but it is a free download. It's not up there yet, but it will be probably by the end of today. It's a free download for people who are in like very early grief, like their grief has just happened. So I was trying to think like, what would I have wanted? Like when Libby first died, what would have really helped me? And I wanted to create that so that it would help other people. And I figured what would really help me was like a practical step-by-step guide for like, what the hell do I do? (laughs) Because it was kind of like, we had like, we had never dealt with anything like that before. We didn't know how to deal with funeral homes and insurance and all that kind of stuff. And then with my mom, that was like a long drawn out process dealing with like hospice and her house and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, where's like a guidebook for all the shit that you have to do and dealing with death that you don't really want to think about, but you have to because you have to adult. And so that's what I created. It is a guide. It is called To Do Through the Tears. Um, kind of like that. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a practical guide with steps. It has like checklists for all, all kinds of different stuff, like all of the financial stuff you don't think about, um, the funeral stuff, like what you need for the yeah. funeral. Um, it's like you say in that guide, it's, you know, it's very different for, you know, for what we had to go through with Libby. You know, she didn't have any of the financial, the house, the insurance, the job or anything like that. But, you know, for your dad and your mom, you had to go through all that stuff kind of. And, you know, like you said, one having a will, the other one not having a will. And how do you handle some of that stuff? So, yeah, it's a nice little, nice little guide. Thank you. Uh, you're the only one that's read it. Yes. And you caught a typo that I still have to fix. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> I know. I was so tired. I finished it last night. I worked on it like I was working on it for hours yesterday and finished it last night super late. And then I just sent it to him. And I'm like, hey, can you read through this and tell me if it's you know missing anything or needs anything or if it's good, it makes sense. And yeah, he took screenshots of the typos and sent it back. There were only two, though. That was pretty yeah, good for that thing. Yeah, I mean, I was... It's like 18 too. pages long or something like that. And it has... The thing that I really like in it, it has um, templates. So it has, like, a template for writing an obituary. It tells you, you know, what you should have in your obituary. And then it actually has sample obituaries that I've written. I put Libby's obituary in there, and I put my mom's obituary in there. Um... So you can see examples of ones that I've written. It has like a template to notify like employers, like with my mom and dad, to notify their employer that they've passed away. How do you do that and deal with all of like any insurance or benefits or, you know, pay they might have all that kind of, just so much crap you have to deal with. So that's what I decided I would have wanted if someone that I love had just passed away. So I created it. So it will be free for people who need it. So I am... I think one of the biggest takeaways I got from our, you know, with Libby was, you know, the right funeral home. You know, there are, our funeral yeah. home is amazing. And, and I, I think it's, I think it's like that regardless, but it, it also happened that I was, I used to coach lacrosse with one of the funeral directors. So he just kind of, he came in when he was on vacation. Once he found out, he came in and said, I'm taking care of everything. Like you just tell me what you need and we'll take care of all of it. So they were super, super super helpful and kind of guiding us through that so i think that is a big thing you know find the right funeral home one that you're comfortable with and one that you know can kind of do a lot of that stuff for you because that's what they do that's their whole thing so um let them help you if if you find a good yes they're a wealth of knowledge they will really help and help so and take some of that stuff off your plate yeah because you really don't feel like dealing with it (laughs) even though you have to So Diane says, thank you for addressing grief. My daughter took a life two years ago. Diane, I am so sorry. And you are so welcome. If there's anything that you want us to talk about or answer anything, let us know. Um, Yeah, that's why we're here. Just kind of trying to help other people get this out there, talk about grief, normalize it, and kind of build a community for 
people who are going through the same struggles that we are. So thank you for joining us. Um, Okay. So I talked about the podcast Mm -hmm. and what else? Christmas. I guess we can just go into Christmas and kind of how that went. So when we left off, I'll leave a link over here. Right on my forehead. On David's forehead. I will leave a link uh, to the last morning coffee episode where David was here. We talked about kind of our upcoming Christmas plans, if you want to see what they were. But pretty much everything went according to plan. Our middle son, Grayson, um, he was there Christmas morning. So he got his work schedule changed. So he was able to be there. So we were able to do the typical Christmas morning with the boys. And it was nice. It was not, I didn't sleep much the night before. Cause <laughs> uh, so my son's dog that lives at their house um, has like a condition. Is it his pancreas or kidney? Pancreas. Pancreas condition that requires like expensive medication. And it makes his skin super, super dry, apparently, for some reason. So he just scratches and scratches and scratches. <laughs> so I'm on the couch and he's all that was like just scratching. I was like, oh my gosh. So I didn't sleep much. So I was a little tired, but it was all right. We didn't have much to do that day. So um, we did get the normal Christmas morning in. And I'll let you talk about how it went for you. <laughs> Yes. Well, yeah, it was going fine until Brooke gave me her present. So, um, no, Brooke got me. Um, I, I really, I, I recently bought a house in the middle of April or something, and I haven't done a whole lot, and I never had room to hang pictures where I was living previously. Um, so, uh, I wanted to get some pictures for my house, and, and Brooke was um, thoughtful enough to gets take some of the pictures that I really loved and, and got me some pictures of the kids. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> got, got one of the three pictures with Libby, uh, with like three of my favorite pictures of Libby. And, um, yeah, it, uh, punched me in the gut big time. I mean, yeah. it was, it was a good, it was one of those good punch in the guts. It was, you know, kind of, I wasn't, thinking that that was how Christmas was going to go. I thought it was going to be pretty calm and relaxed and, but I needed it too. you know, that release. I hadn't, hadn't really had a breakdown in a while. So they're always good to have and get out. And, um, but yeah, it was, it was a gut punch on Christmas. And, I gotta tell you, I felt so bad. I was so excited about mm-hmm. those pictures because I specifically picked out pictures that I knew that he loved. And, and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's going to love this. Because he's been saying like for months, I need to get pictures of the kids. I need to get pictures of the kids. So I got the pictures of the kids and I thought he was going to be super excited. And I think he won. Like, I think I he watched. did. Like, yeah. He loved, it he was, loved them. Yeah. But it was like, oh my God, Christmas morning. He was just sobbing. I felt so bad. And the boys are just looking at me like, uh, thanks, mom. <laughs> this just made things awkward. But he recovered. Well, no, I mean, yeah. it was again. It wasn't a. It wasn't a bad thing. I mean, it was probably awkward for the boys to s- sit there and watch me sob that way. But yeah, um, I didn't think about that yeah, when I was, was getting them. Like, yeah. Merry Christmas! I'm going to make you crush. No, but at the same time, it's it's healthy. It's and it's good for the boys to see that it's okay. You know, it's okay for That's men true. to cry, and you know, we we should be emotional. We should let that stuff out. So. Um, might have been awkward for them at that point but it was it was good for me and it was tears of joy i mean it was i mean certainly sad but at the same time there were things that i wanted and they mean a lot to me so it was it was a great gift very good thanks yeah oh yeah so that was christmas morning and then our son went to work and we just sort of hung out for a while and then When he got home from work, then we did, like, the traditional, normal Christmas dinner that we usually do. And it was really nice. We all ate together, and then we played a game. We played Settlers of Catan, if you know that game. Um, 
and the boys were actually like into it and everybody got along and Max actually watched a movie with us too. Yeah, that's Grace right. Was at work, so. yeah. yeah. So it was really nice getting to spend time together and yeah. obviously we miss Libby so much, but Yeah. But not having to run around either. I mean, we were the plan was to to go to my mom's for my mom always does like a breakfast thing, like after everybody kind of opens up their gifts, yeah. and then we all would go to my mom's, but she got COVID on Friday, so you know that kind of eliminated his plans, and I think it actually was better. I think it. I mean, don't tell that her I, that. I don't no, know if you're watching I, this. I did, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did. I did tell her that yesterday when I stopped over at her house. It said it wasn't wasn't that I wouldn't want to be there but it was nice to not have to go anywhere on christmas day and yeah. just be able to sit and absorb and kind of deal with with the loss and the, the missing piece you know and and i think last year we built it up so much that we didn't go through those same emotions yeah. there was there was i don't know somewhat of a numbness still for that first christmas but this year I think it was nice to be able to just chill and kind of not have to worry about it. And, uh, and I, and I had to put that fake face on. Yeah. Like, we are like, yay, it's Christmas. <laughs> yeah, no, I struggled. That that was one thing I really struggled with last year was when I went over to my mom's to see. I've got all, Libby was the only girl in that generation. So I've got all boys. But to see all my nephews, um, and they were all, you know, a couple of them were all, close in age and uh to see all of them and to see them going through that you know there's this anger of why the hell isn't Libby here and um you know so you go through that so this this year was kind of nice to just not have to worry about any of that and and um just be able to relax and enjoy like I said we got to hang out with Max for a good portion of the day and then Gray came home and we were able to enjoy some time with him without it getting crazy like it normally does with Grayson because he doesn't want to spend time with any of us. So, but it was good. I mean, yeah. he was he was pretty good. So we survived Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Not so much after Christmas for me. So I'm gonna tell tell this story because I think it's important to share, and I think I'm gonna make a whole video about this, and I'm just gonna be like brutally honest about something that a lot of people don't talk about, but. So my week after Christmas has been brutal. Um, and there's a particular reason, I believe, for that. When I stayed over uh, at their house for Christmas Eve, I forgot to pack my medication. And so I didn't have the medication that I typically take in the evenings. And um, I take, oh, I'm just laying this out there. <laughs> Well, I'm probably oversharing, but so I have taken ever since Libby died. Um, I started out with more medications that I've kind of weaned off of some of them. So I took, uh, I started out, I think with Xanax and then I took one that was like lorazepam because I was having really bad panic attacks where like I couldn't breathe. And that one really like, <laughs> like you take that and you're like, Ooh, that one really calms you down. But um, those can be habit forming and they're pretty strong. And so a little while after she died, like I wanted to kind of wean myself off of those, but I was still really struggling. So I have been taking something called hydroxazine. I think that's how you say it. Um, and it's commonly prescribed for anxiety and panic attacks. And I take it once at night, um, each night, and it also kind of helps you sleep. So I've been taking that pretty much ever since I got off the other stuff, but I've been on something ever since Libby died. And again, I, I overshare, but I have struggled with depression pretty much forever. Um, yeah. You know, as long as you've known me. <laughs> and there have been events that have happened in my life where it like ramps up. Um, so I'm not a stranger to taking different medications for depression and stuff like that. Um, but when I stayed over there and I didn't have that medication, I was like, Ugh, I've been wanting to try to like get off of medication completely. So I'm like, maybe this is a good time since I took it. And it, the medication only stays in your body. I think it's um, 
24 hours that it lasts. So you have to take it every day. It's, and it's non habit forming. So I'm like, I'm just going to try not taking it and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like I told him, I felt like I needed to like make a video just to apologize to people. Um, because I'm like, maybe everybody asked me like, how are you doing so well? How are you functioning? And I'm like, maybe it's because I'm just drugged on. <laughs> because I was a hot mess uh, when I did not have the medication. But I will say, I, I don't think that's it. I don't think that's how I'm doing okay. I think it's it's my personality and coping skills and, and a lot of stuff. And also all the stuff that I talk about that I tell people to do. <laughs> I am maintaining it's all good because I've put all that stuff into practice and it's been how long now? I can't math. It's been a week and it's much, much, much better. Those first couple days, even though it's not supposed to be habit forming or whatever, like, holy shit, people. <laughs> it, the feelings were like almost crippling. Um, I was it like the next day after I went home. I don't even know why I did it. I have times where I watch like videos of Libby and I set aside time to look at pictures of her and whatever when I have nothing else going on and I know that I can cry and get it out and whatever. And I didn't really have anything going on. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do that. And I just went down a rabbit hole of watching like every single video that I have of Libby. And there was one in particular, like I was kind of holding it together, although I, it was overwhelming. Um, but then I got to a video of her losing her front tooth and she was sitting in the car, like right next to me, we were waiting for her brother. And so the camera is like, she's right there. And she's like wiggling the tooth, trying to get it out and like giggling and laughing. And I'm like talking to her like twist it, twist it. And we're laughing because it was like backwards. <laughs> and she twisted the tooth and it's like backwards sticking out of her mouth. And it was just, I could remember it. And I just wanted to reach through my phone and just kiss her cheek and hug her. And I just lost it like hysterical sobbing. And normally it lasts for a little bit and then I'm kind of done, but it lasted long enough that I actually called him and because well, I just had to talk to somebody. I like, uh, I was like, talk me down because I cannot stop crying. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to do. It's terrible. Um, I don't even remember what I said or what, like what I called, but oh yeah, it, was rough and it was a couple days of like very rough like wallowing pain just pain well and i think too again i'm not discounting the medication but you were also off work you had nothing really going on other than sitting here and going through stuff and and you were trying to clean stuff out and as you were cleaning stuff out you were finding yeah. stuff th that had to do with libby and, and certain things so you were getting a lot of trigger hits too yes. and less distractions that you would normally get at work so had you been at work and taken that off, time off with the medication it might not have been as bad because you would have had other things to do but I, I think medication is an important piece, especially for some people that I, I could not have functioned yeah. without it. Um, I really couldn't have. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. So I always tell people like there's absolutely no shame in mm -hmm. in trying to get medication. That does not mean like my mom was on Xanax, Xanax, I think, like her entire life. Like her entire she she was addicted to it. She couldn't get off of it and and I don't want to be like that. Um, and if you take Xanax all the time, I'm sorry. I'm not like, do what you need to do. I just personally, sorry, I just hit my mic. I personally, you know, do not want to be on, I, I want to be on as few medications as possible. Um, but there, uh, there's absolutely a place for them. And they have helped me immensely. Like, my entire life with my depression and anxiety and panic attacks and that kind of stuff. 
But yeah, I, it was, it's just a difference in the feelings. Like it really does kind of take the edge off so that you can function. But the good news in all of this is that now that it's been a week, it's, the feelings are still, I think, stronger and hit me a little bit differently, hit, hit me a little bit harder, I would say, but I am dealing with it. Like it's, <clears throat> yeah. And, and I think a lot of that is working on stuff. So I think when you keep yourself busy yeah, and, and I'm the same way, like it, it's the times that really get me are the times that I'm by myself and I'm thinking, and you know, um, not that I don't want to, not think about Libby. I, I think about Libby all the time, but when I sit down and I really focus on pictures, especially, you know, when, when I start looking at pictures, um, I, I typically lose it. You know, if I, if I spend much time on it now, my, my mind is still pushing me to not look at pictures. You know, there's certain times I see things come up and my mind just says, I'll go to something else. Like it just, it's just natural. Um, but it's not that I don't want to look at them. It's just, I, it, I know what's going to happen. I do the I do. same thing. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. And, and I think that was a large part of what you were going through things and, you know, definitely going through the videos would be, would be super hard. Oh yeah. And like you said, like when I was, cause I was kind of cleaning and organizing and <clears throat> like came across her school yearbook and then came across all these like handwritten notes that she had written me. And I was like, Oh God, this sucks. <laughs> I don't, how about you guys who are watching? Like, does anyone want to comment and share when, when does it seem to hit you the most? Or like, what are your biggest triggers that you experience? Oh, I don't know. I always say it like the, the unsuspecting, hits to me are always worse than anything else mm -hmm. but well, anyway it's all right. little, little stuff certainly <sighs> okay um <laughs> let's see what's amazing um new year's <laughs> new year's yeah mm -hmm. new year's new year's i've never been a new year's person really mm -hmm. Like, I've never really cared about New Year's. I've never, I've been to one New Year's Eve party. Um, and that was like with the kids at a friend's house and we left. Yeah, I've just never done anything for New Year's. So it's really not a big deal for me. I would say New Year's as a griever sucks because all it is really doing is marking the passage of time since you've had your person. So for me, I keep thinking like, God, it's going to be 2024. That just makes it even longer since Libby died. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, that new year coming, you know, just, although it's not technically the anniversary for Libby, <laughs> you know, for us, it's early in the year. So it's, it seems like it's a we know it's getting chapter close. and, and yeah. It's, it does. It seems like it's been forever. I know it's, it hasn't even been two years for us, but it feels like five or more. I, I mean, at times, and I just, it's crazy. That, that is weird. That we haven't uh, had her that long. Oh, yeah, Diane, that's a great way to look at it as a new chapter. Looking at the positives is always good. Sometimes it's really hard to do that, but. Yeah, it just kind of like, it's like another year that she doesn't get. <laughs> yeah. And this is like now, you know, my mom died in 2023 and now it's like 2024. So it feels like it's not even the year that my mom died. It's just like leaving everything behind. And I think what makes that difficult is that I feel like people perceive it as it's not as important because it's further behind, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. So it's like 2024 now. And if I say like, if it's 2023 and I say my mom, my mom died in 2023, everybody's like, oh, she just died. Right. And like, it's not even that much of a day. <laughs> like, no more time has gone by, but somehow the perception right. of, oh, she died last year, like, 
like that makes it better somehow. Um, it's kind of weird to me. Yeah, no, it's definitely you're right. It's the mind, you know, kind of does that to us automatically. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I agree. It makes it. I don't know. It's, it seems like a new start, and at the same time, you know, it's it's also we know that there's still stuff coming, and I don't know. It's very well for us. Libby died at the in early February, so it's kind of like the month of oh, like we know it's coming. Yeah. And we think of all the last and oh my God, Google photos, mm. uh, Google photos and Facebook memories in January. Like, uh, is it the same way for you? Like all, all I can think of is all the memories that pop up. Like this is the last time we did this. This yeah. is the last time we did that. This was the last time, whatever, like, mm. I've got, I've got, you know, one of the big things that Libby and Libby and the boys and I used to do is hikes. And I know the last hike is coming up soon, you know, and, um, I haven't been able to go back to that trail. And, but I, we also did a bunch of hikes, you know, prior to that, because we we did that a lot. And, um, so I had a couple of them come up. One of my favorite pictures, it was my background screen, um, that we went on a hike with, you know, two of uh, her cousins um, to uh, the Turkey Hill. Um, not the same one, but close to it. And that came up the other day, and it was like, that's one of my favorite pictures of her. And, and then there's a couple more that popped up that are her and I. And Yeah, it was, I know this next one's coming up, and it's going to be bad because I can also remember some of the stuff you told me because of we, it was a really bad decision on my part as a parent, we went out and it just, um, it was really cold. Um, and there was a lot of frozen sections on this trail oh. and I took the boys and Libby and I actually took one of my nephews with us too. So, and and the trail is a super thin, trail it's it's one lane and it's it's a little uphill and we hit this one spot and max fell went straight down on his back like badly and you know if you miss it it, it's off an edge you know not not like a big edge you roll down it would kill you you just go down it'd be scary as heck and um i was trying to get all the kids up helping them and i'm like straddling certain things and it freaked Libby out enough that she told Brooke about it and then started having dreams about me dying and whatever else. And then I think it was a week or two later, Libby was. And it was very, because I had COVID. COVID, yeah. I had COVID and she was terrified that I was going to die yeah. and was completely distraught. Like, I would say to an unusual, like, it's the surprised me to the point where I would like ask people if it was okay or normal because she was so distraught that she could not hug me and so terrified of me dying from COVID. And then that happened. And she, yeah, she was having dreams about both of us dying and kept making comments about how like she felt like something was going to happen to us. And she was like all scared. And then she died like two or three weeks later. It, Ooh, yeah, I was bizarre. Okay, hold on. I want to get to comments here. So, 3K. Hi, I can't look at photos to be honest. Yeah, it's it is rough. It's almost like regressing to the past. That was me this week. I do yearn to see my mom's face. It's been three years. It's still very hard. Yeah, three years. Like people think you should. Oh, you should be over it or whatever. It, no, like three years is. Is nothing. You have pets, they will give you the energy to keep going on this hard every day. Yeah, so pets are not happening for me. I've had pets my entire life and I have been mulling over getting a cat and I can't decide. But everybody that knows me is like, do not get a pet. I just, I'm just not a pet person like the hair and the mat like i think you would you would be content with the right companionship but it's the mess that you don't like if i could have if 
fat, friendly cat that just wanted to sit on me and didn't shed, didn't shed and didn't meow all the time. That would be fantastic. But yes, for other people, I, yeah, I completely a hundred percent agree with you that pets can be so helpful. People tell me that with cats all the time, um, that they can actually sense when you're upset and like they curl up with you and things like that, which is just beautiful. I exercise, do yoga, and this is ritual for me now to keep mentally well. That's amazing. Those are both like very, very good coping mechanisms. So good, good on you. <clears throat> Maureen, my son's birthday is on New Year's Day. Oh, my word. Well, yeah, then this is, I am, I am sending you extra love because, wow, this hits especially hard for you. Should be turning 36. He died seven years ago at age 28. Christmas season is tough, culminating in the grief we experience on New Year's. I, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I understand. I understand. Yeah. And I am sorry because, phew. That's one of those, you know, that, that kind of takes me back. There's an old MASH episode um, for those who like MASH, but. Are old enough to remember. Yeah. <laughs> but there's an episode in there where, you know, they have. They have um, their it's during Christmas time and they have a wounded soldier come in on Christmas Day and they're basically saying we don't want him to die on Christmas Day so that his kids don't have mm. to think of every Christmas Day as the day their dad died. And that's obviously what Maureen is having to go through dealing with that. And that's yeah. You know, everybody else, you know, it's supposed to be a time of happiness and, and you're having to deal with something that you don't want to be reminded of in any way. And that's got to be just awful for you. Yeah. Maureen, not the same, but my, I get it. My, uh, my sister died four, four days before Christmas. So for years with my family, it was the same thing. It was like, instead of being excited about Christmas, it's just build up because, you know, like. Oh, this is when Shannon died. Um, so yeah, it's really rough when the death coincide with those things that are difficult already. So, all right, we're at thirty-seven minutes. Do you want to talk about um, goals? Do you do goals and resolutions? I don't, mostly because I'm terrible at them. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm very much a free flow go with the flow kind of guy. So um, maybe I should do goals. Maybe it would help my life. <laughs> but um, no, I, I don't. But there are certain things that certainly this year that I do in my head. I have things that I want to get, get accomplished. I want to get the house, you know, cleaned up and put together the way I want. And um, certainly have some goals for myself and, and work um that i want to accomplish but uh as far as grief goes no i mean i just that i just want to try and keep going and you know try and survive another year and <laughs> survive some things and yeah <laughs> no, how about you um i don't normally do like resolutions or anything like that the same thing. I always break them and then I feel shitty about myself. So, um, but I definitely have things that I want to accomplish and things that I'm kind of like looking forward to doing. I would say I'm curious about this year. I feel like this year is going to be, or has the potential to be different for me. Yeah. I, have, I do have a lot, of, a lot of, I'm kind of starting. So, um, I have the book coming out this year and for anyone who's interested, uh, grief sucks, but your life doesn't have to. Um, I'm just really excited about that. Yeah. Like, I'm excited uh, for it. <laughs> Something that you've always wanted to do was to write a book. And yeah. Now, unfortunately you've got a topic that you're very passionate about, but, um, but you've also got some other stuff other books that you're working on too. I do. Are. Yeah. So um, with Grief Sucks But Your Life Doesn't Have To, that is, I'm not sure exactly when it's coming out. As soon as I know, I will let you know. Um, and if you are interested, if you're not on my, um, I, I hate, I feel so weird doing like these plugs, but I, 
<laughs> this is how the world works. So this is how I guess you grow like what you do and, and turn it into something bigger. But um on my website, again, you can sign up for my newsletter there, my email newsletter. And so I keep my newsletter kind of apprised with what's happening with the book. Um, but for anyone who actually uh, is interested right now, it's totally edited. It's it's done. I've had a couple um, leads as far as like public relations go with getting it out there because the people who have read it so far um, have had amazingly nice things to say about it and feel like it should be out in the world and available to more people than it probably would be if I just self-published and, you know, put it on Amazon and that was about it. Um, so yeah, there's some stuff in the works there and I'm excited to kind of see what comes of that, but, uh, whatever comes of that, it will be coming out this year and that will be exciting. Um, cause I will be doing some publicity stuff for that. So it probably won't be until, uh, the summer when I'm off of uh, work from teaching so that I can kind of travel around and be on podcasts and do that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that and sharing my story and Libby's story and helping people there. I have some conferences lined up this year to either speak or present workshops at different conferences. Um, so I am, I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. Just something different. And then like you were saying, uh, I am, working on other books as well that are not grief related. Um, my daughter Libby and I watched, um, <laughs> we watched Little House on the Prairie together um, all the time. And she loved Little House on the Prairie. And that was something special that we shared. And so I am creating a book series um, that is called Libby's Frontier. And she's the main character. And it's like a young adult, like element, late elementary school um, age series of stories about Libby on the frontier. And yeah, uh, and I'm really, really enjoying. But the nice thing about those is it up. follows her personality traits. Yeah. She so she had, um, no, no, it, thank you for reminding me. She had <laughs> it perfectly describes Libby. So she had a piece of paper and I have pictures of it somewhere. Um, where she printed out character traits, like positive character traits. And she had a positive character trait for each day of the week. And so like Sunday was productivity and <laughs> Tuesday, you know, Tuesday was compassion and whatever. So she had all these character traits and each day she would try to do something to like exemplify that character trait because Libby, <laughs> yeah. because that's just yeah, sure. who she was. Um, and so the story, Libby's Friends Here, it's a series of seven books, and each book focuses on one of Libby's character traits that she always tried to portray. So it's really just in honor of her and what we shared. And um, yeah, and so I'm really enjoying working on those as well. So yeah, that's what's coming up for me. Um, I literally just filmed the video before we did this. Um, that is the first in my series of January um, videos, which is, I won't take too much time because I did do a whole other video on it. But basically, in a nutshell, in January, um, I realized that something that's really helped me in my grief is the idea of like simplifying and slow living and kind of simple living. And so I'm spending January talking about those topics and how they apply to grief um, because they truly have helped with my grief. And I think you can probably even see it. So you can, you can attest to this with my personality. Like I used to be like, go, 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 go. Like it was a badge of honor to be the busiest person in the world. And I was miserable at <laughs> doing that. Um, and I also thought that I wanted to be someone who was like constantly traveling and doing all these like things that you know were so great and whatever and uh, you know Libby's death has made me realize I am just a simple person like I just freaking love curling up on my sofa with a book and my fireplace going and that's like my happy place and that so it's all about finding what you what's truly you right. and what truly makes you happy and then just doing things that honor that yeah. um I think that's definitely one of the things that, um, you know, losing someone, especially a child, um, 
you know, it puts everything into perspective a lot better. Um, I think after we separated, um, I kind of came to that conclusion myself, which was, I didn't need a lot. I just, I had certain things that I wanted and, and the biggest part of it was my family. I just wanted to spend as much time as I could with my family. Um, and you know, now losing Libby, uh, it's a large, again, with the boy, it's just weird with the age, you know, the boys being older, um, Libby was that one that was still kind of hanging out yeah. with us. Um, so we lost a huge, huge piece of that, but uh, I agree like a simplistic life, you know, we don't need a, a lot. I think you need to find some things that you love to do that you're passionate about and do those things. Yeah. And, and the other thing too, is get the toxic people out of your life. You know, you don't, you just don't, there's not enough time and, and energy needs to be spent on people that are just not there to support you, help you grow, um, be a better person, want to be a better person. If they don't align with you, then, you know, it's unfortunate. You have to cut ties maybe with people you think are important in your life, but you'll realize it's, it's almost better that they're not in your life and you can kind of move on. But I, mean, I am still terrible at you. that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm admittedly, I have not mastered that art at all. But I think there's, I think there's a lot to that simplistic lifestyle, like you were talking about, which is, you know, we don't need a lot as, as people, you know, good, good company in our lives, people who love us, people that we love. Um, that's kind of enough, you know, all the fancy cars, all the big houses, how many times, how many, how many rooms can you spend in it? Yeah. They do not you know, you happiness. How often are you driving in your car? It's, it's, it's a showpiece for a lot of people. And uh, I just don't have any desire for any of that stuff. Yeah. So simple living has made me a little happier. So yeah, we'll see. I'm hoping that will resonate with you guys. Um, yeah, let me know if there's anything with that that you want to talk about. I know so far I have videos planned talking about like minimalism and decluttering. Um, it is amazing how much decluttering your house declutters your mind and your life and, and makes things easier um, and brings more peace to your life. Um, I'm going to do more stuff because people have asked me about like meal prepping and meal planning because I've been working more on like homemade you know from scratch kind of things um that i'll share and wardrobe is a big one developing um i don't have a complete capsule wardrobe but more of that kind of mindset because i moved to a tiny house so i've got a teeny tiny little closet so i really had to pare down my wardrobe and just all of finances like just finally getting my finances and, and really just not comparing myself to other people um, and not really caring what people think anymore, which again, grief did that. Like gr yeah. losing Libby made me realize, like, I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks it's anymore. Not, <laughs> so not. it's, it, yeah, you don't if live your life for other people. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. If you're, and if I used to be very much like yeah, that. It was definitely keeping up with the Jones that was, the whole time. Yeah. I mean, it was, you, you would constantly look at other people and what they had and be like, well, why can't we have that? It's like, well, do we need that? Yeah. Like, what, what, what do we do? It was we all like, about like, like do, yeah. It was, and and I think you got a lot of that from your dad, you know, for sure. But uh, I think I think you are definitely a lot happier. You're you're still you still have your certain things, but you're you're definitely a lot more chill with a lot of stuff, and and you seem to be kind of finding your niche, which is good. Thanks. Yeah. Working on it. Yeah. Keep hey, working. So, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not saying like you got, you got you, a lot of work. You like you've got, you've got a lot of work left to do. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, we should all be aspiring to be better every day. You know, to grow and learn. Um, if you're not learning every day and, and making yourself, um, you know, a little bit smarter or finding something that uh, helps the world, helps yourself, helps the people you love. You know, that's what it's really all about in my mind, anyway. True that. True that. Karen says, "Keep up the good work, Brooke. Your time is coming. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we will see what happens there. But thank you, Karen. 
morning coffee and grief work is fab really worthwhile and make it real and fun thank you lots of love and light to you thank you so much i really appreciate that that is so sweet also it makes me feel so good just that i'm helping people and i say it like every five seconds so if there's anything i can do to help you anything i can make or create or whatever you'd like to see like i want to hear from people what will help you so that that's my goal so let me know and hi from colorado appreciate all you do thank you dan colorado that's awesome I think How is, too, it, is it snowing? Did it snow? We haven't had any snow here. I feel it used to snow here so much. We're in Pennsylvania and now it like yeah. barely ever snows. It is really annoying. Yeah. No, I think uh, what we were talking about earlier too, like, you know, talking, normalizing, talking about this stuff and, um, you know, really letting other people know that they've got somewhere a resource to talk to someone and kind of kind of understand that they're not they're not alone in the way they're feeling i think that's part of what you're doing is you know trying to keep it very throwing out there like hey this is this is what we look like we're a mess sometimes yeah. <laughs> and, um i think that's important i write grief understand. books but i also go off my medication and have meltdowns yeah. <laughs> like a normal human being so this is real life and yeah. that, that's kind of what i want to show yeah i think the more we can normalize just talking about it the better yeah agreed diane is in cleveland ohio no snow yet yeah. bummer i've heard maybe it's supposed to snow this week but then it they're saying like they don't know yeah. if it's actually going to hit us oh, oh you had a white christmas Lucky. we used to I, global warming man we used to have white christmases here all the time like mm -hmm. It always snowed before Christmas, and the past couple of years, it has not snowed. It, if it does snow, it snows in like February or March. And last year, we had no snow, like not a single snow day at school, which as a teacher is like the worst because we live for snow days. And nope, none. So I am jealous of your white Christmas. I hope you are able to enjoy I'm not like, I don't like to go like run around in it, but I love how snow looks. Yeah. It just doesn't feel like winter unless we get at least a little bit. Yep. Yeah. All right. We are at 52 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone has any other questions, drop them quickly in the chat. Otherwise, I guess we will wrap up for this week. And January, I have all kinds of people lined up to talk to. But I do, I, I kind of like having you here to bounce stuff off of and just sort of share our story. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to snag you back here every now and then. <laughs> Come my unwitting co-host. Yeah. Uh, but it will be just me for a little bit. Um, in January, I've, like I said, I have a couple people lined up already. And we're going to be talking about human composting, which is kind of crazy, but going along with the eco-friendliness of simple living and simplifying and not buying into consumer culture and keeping up with the Joneses. Um, I'm interested to hear about that option for people. Um, so basically, yeah, you kind of get, instead of being cremated, you get your loved one back as like soil that you can plant. Oh. Which is kind of beautiful. Mm -hmm. I feel like Libby would have liked that. Um, <clears throat> and then I have someone specifically coming to talk about pet loss and grief over pets. And I have another wonderful grief support person, grief educator um, slash coach that is going to come in. We're going to discuss things. And then I have another person who is also uh, a grief professional. And we're going to focus on identity identity loss with grief because man that is one thing that well yeah. oh, it goes along with what i was saying about like the simple living and uh, like figuring out who i am and what i actually like and just being true to myself and it's because my whole identity was kind of ripped out from under me and i had to figure out who i was so we're going to be talking about how grief impacts not only it's not just the loss, it's everything else you lose uh -huh. around yeah. the person that you lost. That was a big piece for us. Yeah. You know, we definitely. thought we had so many more years of being a parent and, you know, Max is 
turning 21 next Saturday. How and, crazy is that? We're going to have a 21 year old. And, you know, we don't have that the same thing like Christmas. We just didn't have that joy. You know, not that the boys weren't happy with what they got, yeah. but they weren't living. It's you not know, like nobody was living. That's the, yeah. Yeah, that was the thing. But yeah. And the other thing, too, maybe you want to mention is Tuesday. Talking with Tony. Oh, yeah, yeah. Couples. Okay, hold on one second. Let me read these. So Diane says, thank you. Community and grief is so important. Yes, it is. Because others do not always understand. Definitely. Agreed. And Diane, there's a green burial center cemetery here. And a friend did a water cremation of her son. That is so neat. I love exploring these other ideas. Actually, in my, my guide that I just made, um, I talk about like different things and how we had Libby made into stones. So we carry those stones with us. Um, So I love those alternative ideas that are good for the environment. And I think a lot of times can be really meaningful. That's really neat. Yeah. Um, So what was it that was I? Oh, Tony. (laughs) Thank you. That's how long my memory (laughs) lasts on Tuesday. um, We are going to be doing an interview with Tony Lynch. Uh, it's going to be, I think it's live streamed on StreamYard, so it should be on my YouTube channel and his YouTube channel, and then also on Facebook. And uh, it is a whole month that he's doing dedicated specifically to child loss and how child loss affects relationships, which is so important. And not a lot of people talk about that. So yeah, we're going to get on there and be pretty real with how losing our daughter affected relationships in several ways. So yeah, yeah that'll be an interesting one. Yep. So yeah. tune in for that on Tuesday at 4 p.m. if you are interested. Yeah. And I'll post about it. So if you follow me anywhere, I'll I'll post before it pops up so you can catch it. All right. Happy I think new that year, is everyone. it. Happy New Year. Well, attempt to have a happy new year. Try to, I would say, try to find the glimmers of joy where you can. Yeah. Um, again, if you miss this, if you're watching the replay, we do have a podcast now. So basically, this live stream just gets turned into a podcast where you can catch on your favorite podcast channels. And we will be back with you next Sunday. So thank you so much for joining us, and we'll catch you next week. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Sending love and hugs as always. We all know that grief can leave us feeling alone, unmotivated, and even hopeless. That's why I'm so proud to have partnered with Help Text to provide a full year of ongoing expert support to my subscribers. Help Text has individualized support for caregivers, people dealing with a difficult diagnosis, or grieving the loss of a loved one, pregnancy, or even a pet. You answer questions at sign up to get specific support just for you including two texts per week and even extra texts on special or difficult days like birthdays or anniversaries. And the best part is if you sign up using the site linked in my description, you'll get a 10% discount off of your subscription. Thank you so much to Help Text for offering this deal to my subscribers. When life gets hard, getting support from Help Text is easy.